people for promotion. He's judging his people for position. He's just judging his people in the area where he can trust them or not. It's a time of judgment, but it's a time of whether we qualify to be trusted. Amen? Amen. And there is a qualification for everything that he does. Jesus paid the powerful price for each and every one of us to walk and live and be led by the Spirit of God. The Word says that the Father searches those who will worship Him in true spirit and in power. So how do we get filled? We worship. If you're too prideful to lift your hands to heaven, you got a problem. Amen. If you're too prideful to worship, you got a problem. Amen? Now we're talking about something very powerful today because the Lord was revealing to me some things and he's saying, look, these are things that is not expressed enough. Everyone knows what sin is. Everyone knows, you know, certain things that please God and displease God and whatever. But there's an area where we want to align ourselves with the attitude of the Holy Spirit. The attitude of the Holy Spirit. And lining ourselves with the attitude of the Holy Spirit. Without alignment to the attitude of the Holy Spirit, we are hell bound. Amen. We are either heaven bound or hell bound. Just because you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior once doesn't mean you're going to hell. Because the word, I mean going to heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who you serve when you die is where you go. And the word believe means to follow. Amen. Amen? Follow. Amen. Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. And there's a place and decisions that you and I make, we can become hellbound instantly unless we repent and turn from it. So every day, everything that you and I are always involved in, we are either headed hellbound or heavenbound, one or the other. And the word says that God rejects the proud. That means they're hellbound. But he gives grace to the humble. The word grace means God's plan. What's the plan for it? To escape hell and his wrath. So many people think that grace is unmerited favor. Wrong. It's not unmerited favor. You earn God's favor. Amen. Amen. You earn it by what? Being trustful. By being loyal, by being consistent. The word grace, Jesus came in the fullness of grace. That was the plan of God to escape hell and his wrath and the deception of darkness. Would you turn to the book of Romans chapter 8? Attitude of the Spirit. What is the attitude of the Spirit? You will know the attitude of the Spirit if you truly have a relationship with Him. Amen. There is a difference between desire and attitude. Amen. The desire of God is all men be saved. No one perish. But there's an attitude of the Spirit that you and I got to align ourselves with. We've been over Romans 8 multiple times. I think we can go over this scripture and find about 25, 35, maybe 400 messages in this scripture. Amen. But it is so powerful because it's such a reality. And it's a beginning process of the attitude of the Spirit of God. In verse 1, everybody with me? There is therefore now what? No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Condemnation means condemning, means hellbound. Who do not walk according to the what? Flesh. So if you're walking to the flesh, are you hellbound? Yes. But, ac but according to the Spirit. So if you're walking according to the Spirit, you are heavenbound. Now listen, these are epistles that Paul wrote to the church. These were to believers, not unbelievers. Amen. 
And he was warning them, just because you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can still be hell-bound. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of the spirit of sin and what? Death. Now, does anybody remember what the law of the spirit of life is? It is the perfect law of life. It is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. That is the perfect law of the spirit of life. If you can't deny yourself, amen? amen. You certainly aren't heaven bound. Verse 3. For, the, for what the law could not do, then it was weak through the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. An account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the what? Righteous requirements. So is there a requirement? Yes. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? According to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, adultery, all kinds of other things. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be fleshly minded or carnally minded is what? Death. In other words, hell bound. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace, which is heaven bound. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen? Verse 7. I skipped that, I guess. Because the carnal mind is what? Hatred, enmity. Against what? Your carnal mind can never be renewed. Amen? Can't be renewed. That's the old man. Woo, get away. We have a new man now with a new mind. But you need the old mind. Amen? Helps function the body. It's associated with the flesh. It's carnal minded. Is everybody okay? That's all it's good for. Other than that, it just wants to, it has a whole load of memories. It's always attacking you. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's the old man of the past, not the new man of the future. So the carnal mind is hatred towards God, nor, nor is it subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh can't please God. Verse 9. But you're not supposed to be in the flesh, but in the what? Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. He's not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of what? Righteousness, because there is a production of the fruit of righteousness. You can't do that yourself. It has to be through the power of Christ. You can't, listen, this soul power stuff has got to go. A lot of New Agers and everyone else. All of these other foolish things. It's all soul power. It has no power over a demon. He'll kick your butt. Amen. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus from... Jesus, who, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to flesh, you will what? Hell bound. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. You will live. Now, here's something powerful. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are known as what? Sons of God. So those who live according to the flesh are hell-bound. Those who live according to the Spirit of God are heaven-bound. So in this, we are led by the Spirit of God. We must know His attitude. Amen? It's the attitude of the Spirit. Now, attitude is association with um, how you view things. Amen. How you view it. What's your position? And what's your response? Three things of an attitude. How you view it, 
your position on it and your response to something. Has everybody got it? We must, again, align, walk side by side with the attitude of the Spirit of God. Now, the attitude, there are three attitudes of the Spirit that I want to talk about. The first one is called justice. Justice. Justice is associated with the view, according to an attitude how you view things. It's the ability to see on both sides. Somebody get it? It's the ability to see things all the way through, how you view it. It's almost like a judge. You're looking at both sides. You're seeing things all the way through, but you're not placing your opinion on it. Amen? The second one I talk about is an attitude of the Holy Spirit is purity. And that is the position. Your position on things must be selflessness. Your position on things must not be according to the ways of the world. Your position on things not, must not be prejudiced. Does everybody get it? It must not favor. Does everybody get this? It's not a favor. Our position is not favor. And then the other thing of the holiness, uh, 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 of the attitude of the Holy Spirit is holiness. It's an attitude. It is a humble. It's known as how you respond to things. Is everybody with me? So justice is associated with view. Purity is associated with position. Holiness is associated with response. How you respond to things. Is it in a humble, righteous Way. Is it a righteous attitude? It is a humble attitude. Remember when Jesus tempt, was tempted, his attitude maintained the same. He said, his response was, it is written. It is written. It is written. Our response must be a sanctified response. Is everybody okay? Amen. So an attitude is a view, position, and response. The attitude of the Holy Spirit is justice, purity, and holiness. In 2 Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. In verse 8 and 9. Oh, we can start at verse 7. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 3, verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should what? Perish, but that all should come to what? Repentance. This is the Lord's desire. This is the Spirit of the Holy Spirit's desire that no one should perish, but that everyone should come to repentance and get cleansed by the blood of Christ. Amen. Keep that in mind. No one perish. That's his desire. 
So that means that you and I got to align ourselves with the attitude of this Holy Spirit so that we do not perish or become hellbound. And Matthew 7. And the attitude of the Holy Spirit is justice, purity, and holiness. Matthew chapter 7, from verse 1 through 5. Is everybody there? Judge not that you... Be not what? Judged. judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. Amen. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the national grand forest in your own, Amen. the plank in your own eye? So what's he saying? There's nothing wrong with judging by fruits, but if you are judging, not aligning according to the attitude of the Holy Spirit, Amen. you are hell-bound. Verse 4. Oh, how can you say to your brother, look, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. And verse 21. This is where he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? Have I not prayed? Have I not interceded? Have I not labored for you? Have I not given my life for you? Have I not cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. Why? Because when our attitude is not aligned with the Holy Spirit attitude, it is called lawlessness. This is a great deception where many people are going to be quite surprised when they stand before the Lord and why he does not allow them into heaven. Amen. Because their attitude toward others, mankind, is not aligned with the Holy Spirit. Amen. There are people that care more about animals than they do humans. Lawlessness is the opposite of the attitude of the spirit. And that individual's hellbound and doesn't even realize it. In Matthew 6. Attitude of the spirit. Many people are sick and bound because their attitude is not aligned with the Holy Spirit. And verse 14, Matthew 6, 14. Let's speak it, please. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, forgiveness is a choice, but there's an attitude behind forgiveness. Amen. And if that's not dealt with, that person's hellbound. Why? Because he says, if you can't forgive, you can't be forgiven. Amen. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you... I don't have to go there. Forgiveness is a what? Choice. 
Forgiveness is a choice. But the attitude must also align with the attitude of the Holy Spirit or you're hellbound. This is serious. You know, I, I saw a testimony. And when the Holy Spirit was sharing me with this, he reminded me of this video that I saw, this testimony. And there was this preacher. And he'd been preaching and for 30 years and whatever. And he had a heart attack. Something happened to him and he died. And the Lord brought him to heaven and brought him all over. Then he brought him to hell. And the angel that brought him to hell, and the Lord stood back, the gates of hell opened and the angel brought him in. And he saw such terrible things. People eating themselves and their flesh growing right back because these are people who are worshipers of satanic worshipers and drinking blood. He said, you'll do this for the rest, for eternity now, where they were eating their own flesh and their flesh was growing back. People were screaming because of the torment, an emotional torment that they were in because of no longer presence of God. They rested, they neither rested day or night, but constantly screamed out. People that were extortioners and pedophiles and all kinds of things, homosexuals and lesbians and so forth. Why? Because they didn't repent of their ways. And he couldn't understand why God brought them to hell. And he kept going, Lord, I preached 30 years. I did all of these things. And the Lord said, you never forgave your wife. He said, what do you mean forgive my wife? He said, it was all about his attitude of resentment towards his wife that he, God was going to leave him in hell. And I thought, wow. And as the Holy Spirit began to reveal this to me, he brought this back to me in this video. And it's all because of unforgiveness. Again, you can confess unforgiveness, but if you still hold resentment, that's not unforgiveness. Amen. I mean, that's not forgiveness, amen? You haven't forgiven. And that person was hell-bound. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Again, forgiveness is a choice, but the attitude must align with the attitude of the Holy Spirit or we are hell-bound. Matthew 5. Yeah, Matthew 5. This is where we must examine ourselves. <clears throat> we might have been do doing everything else correctly, but how is our attitude towards it? Matthew uh, chapter 5 and verse 1. And Jesus, seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the what? Kingdom of heaven. In other words, he was releasing the area of, they're called be attitudes, be the attitude, become the attitude of the Holy Spirit. Because he's going to tell you what's going to allow people in heaven or not. By these attitudes. Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. That's why some people aren't filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall what? They shall see God. Purity. Blessed are the peacemakers. Amen. For they shall be called sons of God. A peacemaker. And blessed are those who are persecuted. For righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of what? Of heaven. 
And blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are not, we are to be the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor or its attitude, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are to be the light of the world, and a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under the basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works or your good attitude and glorify your Father in heaven. These are the be attitude of the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4. Is everybody okay? I'm telling you, the enemy is coming, stealth, hidden in the body of Christ and promoting the attitude of carnality. You can be tongue-speaking and everything, but still carry a carnal attitude. And we will be hell-bound for that. Verse 31, Ephesians 4, 31. Ah, let's start at 30. <laughs> Do not what? Grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Hello. Do not grieve the Holy by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. That is a warning. Amen. It's a warning. Don't grieve him. Why? Because he'll depart. He'll step away. And I can guarantee you a, whole, a familiar spirit will step right in his place. Hallelujah. Let all what? Bitterness. Bitterness. Wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. They don't have resentment in there, but that's in there. Amen. Bitterness is resentment, isn't it? Amen. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, evil speaking. These are all associated with remarks of an attitude that's carnal, snarky. <laughs> A snarky attitude. <laughs> that's resentment. These are attitudes, marks of attitude of a person that's hell-bound and doesn't realize it. James chapter 3. Smirky and smarky, or sm what a snarky. <laughs> James 3. Why is the Holy Spirit bringing this up? Amen for freedom? Because things are happening now. Remember, we talked about weeks ago about a flood of the enemy. And it is happening. And anything that's not under the blood, there'll be access to. And if resentment is not under the blood, there'll be access to. Hallelujah. James 3.13. Let's speak it. James 3.13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct. Is good conduct associated with attitude? Yes. yes. That's what he's talking about. When it talks about your conduct, it's talking about our attitude. Yes. 
Let him show by good attitude that his works are done in meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart and do not boast and lie against the what? Truth. This is inward. See, the Holy Spirit is trying to release the truth to bring repentance. But we keep resisting it because resentment. It says this wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. This is carnal wisdom, worldly wisdom. This is influenced by Satan's kingdom of this world because he rules it. Forever envy and what? Self-seeking exists. Confusion. And every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that was from above is first what? Pure. Pure. Purity. Then peaceable. Gentle. Willing to what? Yield. Full of what? Mercy. And good fruits. Without what? Partiality. Amen. And without what? Hypocrisy. These are attitudes. And that person is either hell bound or heavenly bound. Is everybody okay? Amen. Now the fruit of what? Righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. This attitude is promoted by evil wisdom, false justifications, Amen. and pride. Still holding an attitude of resentment even though you forgave the person. Amen? It is now uh, uh, an area where there's self-justification and it's not purity because there's a justification in the area that you still have resentment. I can have resentment. I forgive you, but I can still hold resentment. That's wrong. That's hell-bound. That's not heaven-bound. It's not purity. It's not justice. It is defilement. It's not holy. It's lawlessness, and it's hellbound. Does everybody get it? Amen. Again, what are the attitudes of the Spirit? Justice, purity, and holiness. If they do not align with our attitude, we are hellbound. Psalm 64. Everyone must work out their own salvation. Amen? In what? Fear and trembling. And I pray today's message today will bring reverence and trembling to each and every one so that we can see this through and view it all the way on both sides. Because God desires no one to perish. And don't compare yourself with other people. Well, such and such did all of this. Who cares? God is standing before you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, I just don't understand why this person didn't get away with this and this and this and this. That's not your business. Amen. Your business is what he sees about you. Does everybody get this? Why? Because God doesn't want us to perish. Psalm 64, first six verses. Let's speak it. Hear my voice, O God, and my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity. Is rebellion an attitude? Oh, snap, yes. I got one that lives in my house. <laughs> Verse 3. Who sharpen their what? Tongue like a sword. And bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Their what? Bitter words. That they may shoot in secret. You don't even know it. Next thing you know. You're self-justifying why you have resentment towards someone. 
They may shoot in secret at the blameless. And suddenly they shoot at him and do not what? Fear. Fear. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. Amen. They talk of lying snares secretly. And they say, who will see them? The devise iniquities. We have perfected a shrewd scheme. Both the inward thought and the heart of a man are what? Deep. Where is the attack? In the thoughts and in the heart, isn't it? Bitter words of resentment. That's a bad attitude. <laughs> Amen? Remember, the Word tells us that we're not saved by works. Amen? Amen? We're saved by grace. Now, grace is God's plan. So if we're not walking according to God's plan and aligning ourselves with the Holy Spirit attitude, we're not walking according to grace. And we are saved by grace. Psalm 127. Psalm 127, verses 1 and 2. It says, And lust the what? The Lord. The Lord builds the house. They labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved what? Sleep. Again, unless the Lord builds houses, the Lord building our house, we must allow him to build every part of it. Everybody wants to get blessed and prosperous. Yes, Lord, build it. But will you allow him to build your attitude to align with the Holy Spirit? Does everybody get that? I'm telling you, this is vital, very vital right now because God is judging his people. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Oh, glory. A lot of people love to blame their attitudes on everyone else. Amen. The resentments on everyone else or something that occurred in their life. Amen? Anybody ever been offended? Don't raise your hand. You don't need to. Everybody in this room has been offended. Amen? It's what you did with it. It's what you do with it. Amen? That, that, that's the main thing, what you do with it. Do you maintain a, a resentment attitude because you've been offended? Or do you forgive and bless? And you love that person no matter what? James 1.19 Somebody there? So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to what? Wrath or judge. <laughs> For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the what? Word. In other words, there's a lot of people that know the word, but they still hold resentment. The attitude is not aligning with it. Be doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. In other words, that person has lost identity who they really are in Christ. Remember, we are supposed to be in Christ, hidden in Christ, and expressing Christ. 
And our attitude and motive and desires should be all aligned with the Holy Spirit or not truly expressing Christ. Amen? Amen? Is everybody okay? All right. Verse 26. Uh, verse 25, I'm sorry. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, which we talked about the before, what's the law? The perfect law of freedom is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and what? Follow. And continues in, and it's not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what they do. And if anyone among you thinks he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue or attitude, <laughs> but deceives his own heart, this one's religious is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from worldly influence. Demonic influence. Amen? Everyone has been offended. Everyone has had a, a point of uh, offense. In fact, everyone's had a point of resentment and even bitterness. But it's what you've done with, do you still hold on to it? Or did you let it go? Did you forgive? Or did you allow it to go deep and bear fruit? Amen? An attitude of unforgiveness. An attitude of unforgiveness is an attitude of resentment. Amen? Amen? Listen, if, if, when anything happens, we all have conflicts. Things happen in our lives. Amen? Rejecting another person's peace offering by avoiding them is an evil attitude. Amen. Amen. If somebody calls you and tries to communicate with you and say, look at, forgive me, and you avoid them, and you reject them, you're hellbound. Because you haven't re received their area of asking for forgiveness. Does everybody understand that? Why? Because they're trying to be a what? Peacemaker. This goes back to the attitude, the Beatitudes of Christ Jesus. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Now again, if you know that you offended someone, <laughs> amen, we need to go to them and say, look, forgive me. Amen. I'm sorry. Because see, if you can't humble yourself, to clean the slate, you're, you're hellbound. Does everybody get this? This is vital today, I'm telling you. The Holy Spirit was burning in my spirit about, what, about this deception of individuals that don't know. And how many are going to come before the Lord? And you're going to say, Lord, but I did this, 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 that, whatever. He's going to say, look, you practice lawlessness. If your attitude doesn't align with the attitude of the Holy Spirit, it is called lawlessness. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, laying aside all malice of deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious coming to him as a living stone rejected by, indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious. He who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. In other words, Believe means to what? Follow. So if you're following, you're also following the what? Attitude. Oh, yes. Verse 7. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but those who are disobedient, 
The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of what? Stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. But you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now a people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conduct or your what? attitude honorable among the Gentiles that when they speak against you as evildoers they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation only those led by the spirit will truly promote an attitude of the spirit again you can praise God worship God quote the word everything else speak in tongues but still carry resentment towards some people we are judged by, the, by fruits and attitude. The number one fruit is forgiveness. Amen. That is the number one thing that we are judged by, forgiveness. That's the first thing he says, you must forgive or you are not forgiven. So if we say that we forgive but still have resentment, that's unforgiveness. Amen. All offenses, hurts, and rejections... And even expectations of others. We must forgive and hold no resentment. There's a lot of people that I've come across. I, I want to see a lot of people live up to an expectation that I have for them. But because they don't, I can't, it doesn't make me to hold resentment towards them. I forgive them and bless them and allow God to deal with them but I'll love them. But there, I have expectations for everyone. Amen? All of these can happen anywhere. It can happen in your church, congregation. It can happen at your workplace. It can happen at your schools. It can happen in your home. I mean, we have expectations for our children. But because they're not meeting our expectation doesn't mean I'm going to hold resentment towards them. I'd like to slap the hell out of them and make room for heaven, but still. I have to forgive them, bless them, love them, and let God deal with them. But if I hold resentment, it's interfering with God. Then that means I'm getting in the way. And you got to look at it. If there's any resentment towards anyone, you're getting in the way of God's will in their life. Amen? Amen? Everybody's been hurt. And again, if they offer an invitation of forgiveness and peace, you better accept it. Amen. Or you're holding resentment and you are hellbound. Whether family member, neighbor, workplace, church, do it and mean it. Amen. Psalm 18. And don't forget, for some of us, we need to extend an invitation of peace. And forgiveness. Psalm 18. In verse 20. Somebody there? Is everybody okay? Let's speak this. The Lord rewarded me according to my what? Righteousness. Righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. In other words, the attitude. I have not wickedly departed from my God, for all his judgments were before me. 
I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful, you will show yourself mercy. With the blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. With the de devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble. You will save the humble, but he won't save the proud. But will bring down the haughty looks. Wow. Is everybody okay? So we got to understand what we're rewarded by our attitude. People don't even realize that. What does it say? The kingdom of God is what? Peace, joy, and righteousness and the Holy Spirit. Forgiveness is a big thing. Resentment is huge. So many people are resentment. They're resentment of churches. They, they re all kinds of things. I don't care what's happened in your life. I don't care if you were abused when you were a child. I don't, it doesn't matter. We must forgive. You, everybody's been rejected. Everybody's been abused in one way or another, whether verbally, physically. Everyone's been lied to. Everyone's been cheated. Amen? Everyone. But we cannot hold resentment. You just can't. That's not the attitude of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 15, and we'll close here. Again, we are not saved by good works. We are saved by what? Grace. God's plan. Psalm 15, let's speak it. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill, he who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. In other words, he's self-examining himself with the truth, not self-justification, self-examining, not making excuses, not rejecting the counsel of the Holy Spirit, but doing what the Holy Spirit is saying and aligning ourselves with his attitude. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. Amen. He honors them. Well, a person that fears the Lord is going to align himself with the attitude of the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not what? Doesn't change. Doesn't change. Doesn't favor. In other words, favor, there's an area of trust. Trust is earned, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Trust is earned in everything. So somebody may have more of my trust than another person. But it doesn't mean, and, and, and sometimes that person that has more trust will have more favor. Amen? But we don't give favor to everyone that hasn't earned trust. And God doesn't do it, so why should we? Oh, hallelujah. In verse 5, And he who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent, he who does these things shall what? Never be moved out of position. Vital. Vital today. Very important. And the attitude of the Holy Spirit. Examine yourself. Search it through. Forgive. Get that resentment out. If you've got to go talk to someone and share with someone, do it. Forgive them. Because if you still hold resentment, you know, people avoid one. They try to avoid one another because there's resentment. You know? And there's a difference of resentment and conviction. <laughs> Amen? Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to go chase everyone. 
I hold resentment towards no one. I don't trust everyone. But I hold no resentment. Doesn't matter where they are, where they've been, or what they've done. Because God's heart says he desires no one to perish. And when he was on the cross, he expressed himself profoundly. Forgive them, for they don't know what they do. And even though people know what they're doing, they still don't have that grip that this influence is from demonic forces. Amen. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your help in today's teaching, Lord, that it would penetrate deep and that we, you, you would really search us through and, and expose those areas of resentment, even though we've said we've forgiven, but we still hold resentment or an attitude towards anyone that is not an attitude aligned with your Holy Spirit. Lord, help us to forgive and bless everyone and let them go into your hands. Prepare our hearts for communion this morning, Lord, and let your will be done as we examine ourselves and you examine us, setting you before us in Jesus' name.